All right, guys, what's going on? I hope everybody's out there saying high speed and motivated, accomplishing your goals, whatever they may be. I totally forgot to say that on my last video and somebody called me out on it on the comments and I very much appreciate that. Didn't forget to say it on this video, so we got it. But check it out, guys. I got some new hot off the press news in regard to the ACFT. I know you guys are probably getting a little tired with all the updates and the news in regard to the ACFT, but it does look like we really are getting close to a no shit solution with this new NDAA that's coming out in 2024. Now, if you weren't tracking already or you just need a quick refresher, back during the summer of 2023 this year, the Senate and House Armed Service Committees both submitted their own version, draft versions of the National Defense Authorization Act. The National Defense Authorization Act, or NDAA, covers all sorts of things when it comes to military funding, but the one thing that we're really focusing on, especially in regard to this video, is physical fitness. Physical fitness and specifically the standard for testing on how the Army tests the physical fitness of its soldiers. And in that respect, the House version of the NDAA was much different than the Senate's version. The House wanted to keep the ACFT, but they were looking at possibly making the test gender neutral. They also wanted to make a separate test or at least increase the standards of the test for combat MOSs, while the Senate was looking to scrap the ACFT altogether and just go back to the APFT, the old standard PT test for the Army. But obviously these were two totally different concepts which forced the House and the Senate to come back together and come to some sort of compromise in regard to the ACFT or the APFT and determine what that compromise was going to be before they submitted the final draft of the NDAA to the President for final signature. And on December 6th, just a couple days before filming this video, Congress came together and they did come to a compromise in regard to the Army physical fitness test. And that compromise is what we're going to be talking about in today's video. Now I will go ahead and warn you that there is a little bit of gray still. It's not completely solidified. There's still some things that we have to figure out before it actually goes up to the president for signature, but I can give you a general idea of what you can expect for the ACFT next year. All right, guys, so let me show you a few news articles that I found in regard to this topic, um, just to show you where I'm getting my information from. Keep in mind, like I said, it's only been a couple days since the compromise actually took place. Um, so there just isn't a whole lot of news out there, but hey, Grease Soldiers got your back with breaking news, all right? So this is still a little nascent, bear with me, but I think we have enough to work with here. All right, so first things first, I'm gonna show you an article I found in regard to the NDAA package 2024. This article does not go over the ACFT specifically. However, it does show us and prove to us that Congress has taken the steps to reach a compromise in regard to the 2024 National Defense Authorization Act. Right here at the beginning of the article, the Senate took its first procedural step Thursday on the conference deal for the fiscal 2024 National Defense Authorization Act, setting up a vote early next week on a massive policy measure packed with energy and climate provisions. Like I said, there more focused on uh, energy and climate provisions um, as far as this article goes. But it does show us that the 82 to 15 vote followed weeks of negotiations among leaders of the House and Senate Armed Service Committees that culminated late Wednesday, December 6th, when they release an $886 billion compromise bill. So again, we're not just talking about the ACFT here. This is just a very small portion of what's included in the NDAA. But it is something that's very important to us, right? Side note, the 2024 NDAA also included um, the largest pay bump in 20 years for the Army set at, I want to say, 5.6%. So that's something pretty cool to look forward to, right? But anyway, let's move on to an article from military.com. Congress tells Army to set higher fitness standards for combat armed soldiers. All right, there's a pretty big hint right there of what we're gonna be talking about, right? Congress is set to direct the Army to boost fitness standards for most combat arms jobs through a compromise defense policy bill unveiled Wednesday. The must-pass National Defense Authorization Act, or NDAA, which sets funding and policy priorities for the Pentagon, directs the service to increase the baseline standards in the Army Combat Fitness Test, or ACFT, for ground troops including infantry, cavalry scouts, and special forces within 18 months of the bill being signed into law by the President. Now, I know there's other combat MOSs other than just infantry, cavalry, and special forces, but I think that's just the article giving you a baseline idea of who can expect increased ACFT standards, because it does go on to say this. You can see right here with this MOS list that they give you that it's not just going to be infantry, 
Special Forces or CAV. Okay, they've also got included 12 and 13 series as engineers and uh, field artillery. And also the bottom here, it says the bill specifies close combat troops not listing the physically demanding enlisted artillery role, otherwise known as a 13 Bravo, but artillery officers would see new standards. It wasn't immediately clear if that was an oversight. Now, maybe it's just kind of early to be able to find this on the internet, um, or maybe I'm just not looking hard enough, but I have not found the compromised version of the 2024 NDAA, but what I did find was the conference report of the meeting. This is the National Defense Authorization Act for Fiscal Year 2024 conference report, uh, which is basically just a write-up of everything that was compromised upon and all the results that came out of the conference itself. Keep in mind, this report is 3,093 pages long, okay? So I did my very best to find all the information I possibly could in regard to the ACFT. However, there's really just not much. But here's where it looks like military.com got their information from, okay? So right here you can see section 577, increased fitness standards for Army Close Combat Force Military Occupational Specialties. Implementation, not later than 18 months after the date of the enactment of this act, the Secretary of the Army shall implement increased minimal fitness standards as part of the Army Combat Fitness Test for all soldiers of the following military occupational specialties or areas of concentration. And here is that list of MOSs that we just saw in the military.com article. Not later than 365 days after the date of the enactment of this act, the Secretary of the Army provide a briefing to the committees of armed services of the Senate and House of Representatives describing the methodology used to establish standards under subsection alpha. Which is basically saying that they've got 365 days, a whole year to really figure out and dial down what that really looks like. They gotta come up with exactly what the minimum test scores are gonna be, how they're gonna increase the standard, and whether or not those tests are gonna be gender neutral because as you can see, they didn't really get into the weeds on that. Actually, they just didn't mention it at all. But we know that that's something that the House was fighting for in their version of the 2024 NDAA. And that military.com article also mentions this and gives a pretty strong opinion on it. The NDAA does not prescribe the new standards to be gender neutral and about face from what a draft version of the House version of the bill called for and what some army planners were mulling behind the scenes. That means men and women will likely be scored on different standards as they are now, something that has caught the ire of some Republicans on Capitol Hill in recent years. There is nothing preventing the army from doing so though. Army planners have eyed tweaks to the fitness tests, including upping the standards for combat arms roles and potentially making them gender neutral. But lawmakers' frequent debate and proposals have put any plans into a holding pattern. And so really, I guess we're just gonna have to wait and see that it's still kind of up in the air. It could go one way or the other. But the one thing we can take away from this is that combat arms, MOSs, definitely the ones that were listed there twice now in this video, you guys and gals can expect harder standards for the ACFT, at least passing standards. I think that's a step in the right direction. Um, you know, it would have been the easy answer to just say, you know what, forget the ACFT, let's just go back to the APFT. It's definitely an easier test to take. You know, I'm a big fan of the APFT, mainly because of the logistics of it all. I mean, back in the day, you could do an APFT anytime, anywhere, in any conditions. But the ACFT is nothing like that. You know, it takes a whole crew to set up and to run. Um, you gotta set up a whole bunch of time for it, like two or two and a half hours just to conduct an ACFT, a lot of times, especially for bigger units. And you know, I'm really just waiting to see how we're gonna conduct the ACFT when GY2 kicks off. But I guess those are future problems. The good thing is that we are holding combat MOSs to a higher standard. I think that's a good thing. We had talked about in the past that they were looking at possibly implementing a different test for combat MOSs altogether. And I do think that there might've been some good aspects of that, but honestly, that probably would just throw even more confusion to the whole Army fitness standard test mess that we're finding ourselves in today. So we've put all this work and time and effort into developing the ACFT. Looks like they're planning on just maintaining what they got the one big change we can expect, higher standards for combat MOSs. We're not too sure whether or not it's gonna be a gender neutral test or not, but since they're already singling out the combat arms MOSs with this, I wouldn't be surprised if they make those tests gender neutral. 
But those are just my thoughts, guys. I really do want to know what you guys think on this, all right? Let me know in the comments what you guys think on this news. Um, I know it's not super huge news, but it's definitely important to understand and to know the new rollouts that are coming out in the future. It helps you get an idea of what you should be training for, especially if you're somebody that's in a combat MOS, all right? You can no longer just think it's okay to meet the minimum standards. You should have really never thought that way in the first place. The Gritty Soldier motto is exceed the standard and that's what we should be doing, especially for the ACFT. We wanna be able to max that thing. That's what I'm expecting from all of you out there and you should expect nothing less of yourself. But that's it guys, that's the news on the ACFT for today. That's all we know for now. I'm sure that there's gonna be more that rolls out in the future and I will make sure to keep you guys as updated as possible as the news rolls out. If you guys have any more information on this topic, please don't hesitate to drop that in the comments. I could have definitely missed something. I don't think I did, but it's always possible. And again, we wanna hear your thoughts on this topic. Go ahead and drop that in the comments. Start a discussion down there. What do you guys really think about all this? Is it good, is it bad? Do you not really care? We wanna know. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. We talk about all sorts of things on this channel, military fitness, career enhancement, motivation in life, all kinds of things that I'm sure you'll find useful to you. Here are some other videos from this channel. Make sure to give those a watch after this one. But besides that, I've got nothing else for you and I'll see you on the next one.